This is an ABC podcast. It's time to get out and about in the garden with Rowanna and Sabrina here on ABC Radio Perth and WA. It's my favourite time of the week. Sabrina Hunt, it must be your favourite time of the ah, week too, I reckon. Indeed it is. When I come up the stairs, because I'm still capable of walking up them, <laughs> I, don't, I haven't had to get the lift yet. Go, girl. Uh, I think once when I did some injury to something. Uh, <laughs> uh, but my daughter broke my rib during the week. No, it didn't really break, just cracked it. Is it because her bloody jigsaw puzzle, which is on this enormous, I hope you're listening, Jess, on this enormous board, which I've moved from one room to another for about three weeks. And then at the beginning of last week, I had the board and I was in a hurry and I ran into the door frame (laughs) and the corner of the table just struck my rib, winded me, and then I couldn't go to the gym. I couldn't cough. Laugh, sneeze, but I did manage to moan and whinge and complain <laughs> endlessly. <laughs> Do you know what I love about you? <laughs> Completely unprompted, I can say, hi, Sab. <laughs> Enjoy this time of the week. You've managed to share everyone you, with your, yeah. your physical prowess of getting up our yeah. stairs still. Yeah. Don't use the lift. Yep. Moan, complain yep. about you. Yep. Throw your daughter under the bus on radio. Yep. That's it. And All now you're ready to go. Two minutes. Let's hit this program, Ro. <laughs> All right, fine. Let's let's do that. Let's hit it and we'll start with Cynthia, who can tell us what's happening in terms of open gardens. Good morning, Cynthia. Good morning, Rowanna and Sabrina. Well, what a weekend. Oh, I know. Um, You've got a couple of crackers this weekend. Well, we might have to take our raincoats and brollies tomorrow. Oh, and no. I and I'm on the gate, so I'm suspecting oh. I'll get drowned. <laughs> you better wear you better wear full you know, the full suit. Absolutely. Anyway, we've got a fabulous garden, John Banowicz's garden. Um, John, as everybody probably knows, is the president of the WA Fern Society, so his collection of ferns would just blow your mind. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, very green sort of a garden because he's got bamboo, you know, very tropical sort of um, scenery, but he's also got... Um, Bromeliads for dash of colour, and there's a bonsai collection. So, uh, three different gardeners have three different um, uh, collections in this garden, and um, there will be refreshments available. And also, Shirley Fisher is having her art display there. It's, Shirley's paintings are just magic. She does scenes of the um, Kimberleys and um, Flinders Ranges, things like that. Just beautiful. Oh. Gorgeous. We're, yeah, we're also asking people not to take their dogs because they have um, resident bandicoots living in the oh, garden. How they're cute. very cute. Yeah. They're, they're so old, some of these ones, but they come out to get all the crumbs. Oh, <laughs> they're oh, quite cute. Oh, they're clever. Clever yes, bandicoots. Yeah. Yes. And John is uh, raising money for the Royal Flying Doctors Service and Medicine Sons Frontiers. Not very good on the French, but both really well worth um, um, charities to be raising money yeah, for. So, yeah. But it, there's uh, also a fabulous veggie patch there. It's um, amazing, John's veggie patch. He's got chooks, fruit trees, um, the verge, the front... Um, driveway is uh, all with native plants that he's um, put in there so it's a very big garden yeah, and, and there's I'm lots sure and lots uh, lots of variety of plants and in fact I think uh, people don't realize just how many Australian ferns there are yeah so, look, it's amazing yeah he's John's a wealth biggest, of knowledge the biggest fern house I've ever seen <laughs> yeah absolutely well, yes. I think, well, the ferns will be loving the rain, though, <laughs> Cynthia. They will. Mm. They will, mm. yes. So and w- I think it's going to be a nice day today anyway. Oh, today's going to be glorious, glorious. Yeah. So what's the address again? 16 Lakes Way in Jandicott. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Excellent. Thank you, yes. Cynthia. Thanks, Sabrina. Okay, bye. <laughs> Thanks very much to Cynthia there. So this open gardens, Kafer. Yeah. Um, you just roll up. 
Yeah, Anyone? you just yeah, you just rock up. There's, even me. Yeah, even you. You could just go there um, and pretend that you know some of the plants. Yeah. Uh, it's really good because what it is is people that are passionate and you get people like John who's really into ferns. So in the Open Garden Scheme you get people that have this, you know, the, this passion for a particular group of plants. Mm-hmm. So there's... Um, succulents and there's actually there's a succulent show on somewhere at some time i'll find that in my <laughs> that's incredibly I helpful know, for I, our listeners I, isn't that great but you i'll, uh, have I'll, a look I'll that pull one. that up i'll get but it's great because it inspires people to know what they can do with their garden it's marvelous yeah it sounds like something that maybe when i'm a little more advanced in my um Gardening, yes, you know, int- not interest. Yes. Interest isn't the right word. Capability, probably. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. Then darling. I can. I could even host one, maybe one day. Oh, you could. <laughs> I reckon that's a great idea. All right, let's head to Alicia. There's a few phone lines open, 1300 222 720, if you want to give Sabrina a call and she can help you with your gardening problems. Alicia, good morning. Good morning, ladies. Um are you? Oh, sorry. Hello, that's all right. Baby. My dog is screaming in the background. That's not quite all right. Not agreeing at all. It's, it's not um, ours, so it doesn't belong to, to Ro, it doesn't belong to me, so we don't care. So we all care yeah, in our responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, aside from her, yes. um, uh, we got home from a two-week holiday up north yesterday to find our chilli plants who had been plodding along quite happily out yeah. in front in a yeah. wicking barrel. Not looking so crash hot. Not that they were weeping or anything, but no. I sent you a photo. Yeah. They look like they've got something weird and curly on all the new shoots. Now they were looking smashingly beautiful. Before. Yeah. Yep. Therefore, is this the catch cry of the last month and a half, otherwise known as chili thrip, yes. or is it something else? No, no. It's um, Well, fortunately for you, it's chili thrip. And the reason I say that, Alicia, is because you can cut all that new growth off. So... Prune it all off, get some pyrethrum, spray it with pyrethrum. Chili thrips are just about near the end of their tether. So prune all that growth off. And chilies actually like a prune. So uh, bag it. Don't just leave it on the ground. So bag the, the cutting, spray it with pyrethrum after you've pruned and then the new growth should be okay. All right. Good luck with that one, Alicia. Good luck with the crying baby too. Yes. And thank you for sending those uh, photos through. It does make it much easier if you've got something specific that you can shoot through a photo on zero four three seven nine double two seven twenty. And then if you jump on the phones and we can have a chat about it. And just and Ro, like that. Ro, I found it. Look, I found so the um, the thingy about the, the thingy at yeah, some time. Thingy about the housey mother. So the so the cactus and succulent. Uh, autumn show was deferred last time but it's on on the 17th and 18th of april at the south perth community hall um and uh lots and lots of amazing different cactus and succulents but better than that you have all the experts that can tell you how to grow it what's wrong with it what pest it is and you can buy plants which is the most exciting thing ever perfect mark that one in your calendar 17th and 18th at the South Perth Community Hall. Let's head back to the phones. Ryan in Margaret River. Good morning. Hey, how are you? Yeah, good, good Ryan. Thank you. Uh, I have a pomegranate that um, it's in like a stone, it's an ex-fish pond, uh, like a stone pot sort of thing. About yeah. About half, half as deep as a wine barrel. Yeah. Um, it was going all right, but I've noticed that it's it's not draining. I had um, holes drilled in it, but it's not draining well anymore. Oh, okay. Um, what I wanted to do was shift it to a, wine, a half wine barrel. Yeah. Uh, is, is it okay to do it now? Yeah. Or do I need to wait? Ah, yeah. you can do it now, Ryan. All right, sweet. Give it a little. <laughs> give it a little prune. Has it fruited? No, nah, never. It had a couple of flowers once, and then they fell off because it had that those little white things on it. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah Millie Bug or Scale. Yeah, I rang you about them. Oh, okay, all right, <laughs> right. And squished them with my fingers. Oh, like good man. Like okay, yeah, so um, all you need to yeah. do is give a light prune on top and then repot it. So yeah, like I'm out on the west side of Caves Road, like of town, and the yeah. sand's that black, sort of blacky kind of. Okay. Uh, it's not that – it doesn't have very good clay content. There. It, it's, it's that loamy stuff apparently. Is it good to mix a bit of that in with normal potting mix? Or? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I would. And a little bit of compost in with the potting mix, Ryan. And use a wetting oh. agent as well. 
All right, too easy. Thanks very okay. much for that. Okay, no problems. Good on you, Ryan. Thanks very much for your call. Let's head straight to Beverly now, who's in Corrine. Good morning, Beverly. Oh, hi. Um, I was wanting to know about an elk horn or a stag horn. I'm not sure what it is. Yeah. It's got a brown brown rash on the um, underneath side of the leaves. Yeah. Uh, the out, the outside looks fabulous and healthy, but underneath it seems to be this, I don't know whether it's a fungus or what it is, but it's, an under, and it's on the tips of the leaves. Okay, so there's a couple of things. So elk horns and stag horns get uh, spore on the back, and it's but that's velvety. It's a beautiful velvet brown. In fact, one would want to fashion a coat out of it or a stole. You know, it's that lovely velvet, it's a bit like rabbit fur. Um, if it's not that, then it will be they, – they get this tiny, tiny, tiny little um, caterpillar, a leaf miner, that, that eats the inside of the leaf – and then um, you, you'll get all the browning off. Or it can be that it's not humid enough and the tips of the leaves dry out. So with your elk horns and stag horns, it's really important to mist them twice a day to prevent that drying out. Um, with the... With the leaf miner, you can only use, because you've got to be careful what insecticide you use, you can only use the ones that are the specific caterpillar spray and you've got to spray on the underneath of the leaf. All right. There you go, Beverly. Good luck with that. Sab text coming through on 0437922720 from Kathy. Mm. I would like to plant everlasting seeds this weekend in my rose patch and native garden. Can I do this if the areas are covered with wood chip mulch? If so, what's the best way to do it? No worries, Kathy. So what you do is you get your laundry bucket, you put all the seeds of the everlastings in, then you go and buy uh, either a bag of cocoa peat or perlite and you mix that in with the seed and you water it so it's you know quite damp then you just hurl it all over the place sprinkle it everywhere then get the garden hose hose it in those seeds will work down in between the wood chip and then they'll pop up uh in spring simple as that Mm. beautiful everlasting Uh, Rose says, a question for Sabrina, please. The fruit on my fig tree in the wheat belt looks fine, but it has been like this for months. The fruit isn't ripening and we are wondering why. Mm, Rose, it might be, unless it's a known variety of fig, it may be the fig that has the brie, what we call a breba crop, which is, um, it's a teaser. Basically, I don't know why figs do it. They just do it to annoy us. Uh, they will, they will never, they will never ripen. Or it could be one of the really old figs that needs to cross pollinate with another fig, but you need the actual wasp to do the pollination. If you don't get decent fruit off that fig tree in two years, you're never going to get decent fruit. Rip it out and put another one in. Easy done. Quick one from Peter in Mandra. Is now a good time to prune bottle brush and Beaufortia? Uh, Beaufortia is, they're still flowering at the moment. The best time to prune both of those plants is when they finish flowering. Now, there's so many different bottle brushes now. Um, I've got Perth Pink and mine's only just coming into flower now. Usually autumn is a good time, but you, you've got to wait for your bow fortier to finish flowering and then prune it. Okay, lovely. Uh, let's jump back on the phones and say good morning to Dawn, who's called in from Gibson. Hi, Dawn. Good morning, girls. How are you going? Yeah, good, We're Dawn. Good. Sabrina, I'd like to know if it's safe to use neem oil on ferns for merely bug. No, I definitely okay. wouldn't do that. Um, I think you'll find that that's too oily and sticky uh, for ferns. Now, merely bug is such a sort of a thing to get rid of. Um, do you know the only thing that gets them out of ferns is the imidacloprid spray? And because ferns are not flowering, um, it should be safe enough to use. You'll probably only need to do it once dawn. But, um, and I can't give you product names, but it's, you used to be able to get it in tablet forms that you pushed into the soil and then that was taken off the market, but they've now put it back on the market and given it a different name. Oh, good. I know that one. Yeah. Beautiful. That's the one to okay. use, Dawn. But I definitely would not use neem oil. 
Thank you very much. Okay. Bye. Thanks, Dawn. Good on you, Dawn. Enjoy your weekend. Let's head to Pia now, who's called from Esperance. Good morning, Pia. Good morning, ladies. How are you? Good. Very well. That's good. I've got a couple of questions. I sent hmm. through some photos. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We've got um, them yep, for I've... Sabrina to look at. Oh, excellent. Um, one of them is for my Sabertooth 6. Yep. I've got three of those. And the last place I had them, um, they have all grown on one side of the plant. Yeah. And so I've now moved them to a window and turned them. Yep. Um, I want to know... Can I prune them and when's the best time to prune the really long side? Okay, definitely. You can definitely prune them and you'll get much better growth from them. But you don't prune them leading into winter, Pia. So you're going to have to wait or have you done it already? Because sometimes I I say that and people have already (laughs) done it. Um, it. (laughs) Because their rapid growth really is in the warmer weather. But they're inside. So, look, if it's really annoying you, just prune them. Okay. No, so can you can wait. take you can take fifty percent off those saber tooth figs. Yep. Okay. And just from the sides or from the top as well? Everywhere, all around. Okay. Take it all awesome. around. Yep. Thank you. Um, and the other one is um, I don't know the name of the plant. Oh, okay. Um, so it's a gift. Oh, okay. So that's the um, elephant's foot. Yep. Ah, yep. Okay. Um, and so we have just repotted it. It was bright green and going really well and then we repotted it and put compost mm. fresh compost in there mm. and now it looks a bit very yellow pale and yeah yes yep. uh, I would start giving that some liquid plant food um, mm-hmm. you need to up the nitrogen in it and now what's happened is the compost that you've put in has a different pH to what it grew in and that's a reaction to the pH of the, ah, the soil okay. Yep. Take a pH Perfect. test, um, but also give it some liquid fish fertiliser. Okay, mm. liquid fish fertiliser. Yep. I'll give that a yep. go. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you very much. No worries, good Pia. Day. Good on you, Pia. That's how it's done. Send the photos through mm. to 0437 and then give us a call on 1300 two seven twenty, and it makes it super easy for Sabrina to be able to help even though She's pretty good regardless, let's be honest. Let's head to Judy from Mandra. Good morning, Judy. Good morning, ladies. My question is, what is the best time of the year to propagate oleanders? Ah, well, definitely summertime, Judy. So I I know that they're all flowering uh, magnificently at the moment, but, but you know they have that milky sap and mm-hmm. that can tend to they can tend to rot if you take the cuttings in uh, coming into winter. So you're better off waiting from mid mid spring right through to the end of summer. Okay, better to strike them in water or soil. Look, I think they strike much better in soil because of that mm-hmm. milky sap that they have, an open vascular system. Um, they can tend to rot if you put them in. So just get really, really cheap potting mix that mm-hmm. doesn't have fertiliser in it. Um, yes. and, and honestly, they grow so easily from, from a cutting. All right. Do they need uh, the rooting powder? Oh, I've never bothered with that. But, okay. Um, <laughs> some people, some people, yes, you can if you want to. Um, right. Some people dip it in honey. I don't bother with any of that. I take like 10 cuttings and I'm really happy if five survive. <laughs> That's fantastic. Thank you very much, lady. <laughs> no Thanks worries. for giving us a call, Judy. We appreciate that. Uh, another text message on 0437922720. Claire from Stoneville wants to know, when is the best time to put a macadamia in and how best to nurture my nutty friend? Uh, okay, I've got a nutty so, friend. Ha, she yeah, joins I'm, me after I'm, nine next <laughs> Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a few myself, right? <laughs> um, so you can put uh, the macadamia in uh, over winter because we don't get cold in Perth. Oh, you're in Stoneville, you get frost. I would leave it until spring, actually. And we're going to be talking to a very special guest soon who um, he's really into tropical fruit trees. So we'll ask, we'll ask him, shall we? That sounds like a jolly good plan. Sabrina, we'll do that. In about mm, maybe 10 minutes from now, because in five minutes from now, 
We've got Sab's pick of the week. We might need to go to him before because he's running a workshop. No, he's oh, miscommunication. He's fine. Ah. It needs to be after half Great. past because ah. of the workshop. So fabulous. We'll get on to we're that. All, we're all over it this we morning, are. aren't we? <laughs> Completely. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy from South Perth. Good morning. Oh, good morning. How are you? Yeah, morning, Jimmy. Good. Listen, I've just been given a um, uh, move to um, an apartment, and um, I've got a nice pot. It's about a fifty, about a fifty liter pot, and I'm just wondering, what can you give me a couple of suggestions of something to chuck in it? Um, I was thinking maybe a kumquat or uh, something, maybe something with a bit of colour to it. Have you yeah. got any suggestions? I re- yeah. So you said it's on the north side. It's north. Uh, sorry, it's west facing. Oh, west, west facing. facing. So it's going to get lots yeah. of lovely afternoon sun. It sure will. Yeah. Oh, well, I can't quite be beautiful, and look, they're pretty tough. Oh, that's handy. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> 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 but they're so pretty because you get all the hanging fruit on it. It's gorgeous. Okay, and what's the availability of those? Is it like everything else? Is pretty tight supply at the no, moment, or um, just you can depends get, on no. where you go? Nah, Jimmy, you can get kumquats from just about every nursery. All right. No and problem what whatsoever. Look, what, what should I look for in a, in a decent sort of, um, yeah, good The graft. Of it. You need to look at the graft. So um, all citrus fruits grafted on rootstock, you want to make sure that you have a really good, strong graft. So if you look down the bottom of the plant, you'll find there's a, it looks like a stem's been shoved into another stem. That's exactly what it is because that's what a graft is. Um, you just want to make sure that it's calloused over and it's a good strong graft. That's the main the, thing. Okay, and what about the preparation of the medium I'm going to chuck it in? Okay. Just I, any old... I, lo- I love the way Jimmy says, chuck it in. <laughs> you're not going to chuck it in, Jimmy. What you're going to do is you're going to put that in ever so carefully because you want that tree for many, many, many years. So you're not going to chuck it in so much as plant it. So you need to go and buy yourself a really good bag of potting mix, the best potting mix you can get. In that potting mix, you're going to mix a little tiny bit of compost and a little tiny bit of poo, sheep poo. Mix all that together. Then um, fill the pot. Now, you've got to make sure with citrus there's lots of holes. If the pot doesn't have enough holes, you drill more holes in it. Um, do that slowly if it's ceramic because then you end up with a crack pot. Um <laughs> And we don't want any more crack pots. So, and make sure it's up off the ground because drainage is vitally important. So, good quality potting mix, little bit of compost, and a little bit of poo. Um, there you go, Jimmy. Hopefully, that will help you. Um, I'm thinking about the. I think it's a dwarf lime and a dwarf mm. mandarin or something I've got mm. on my front deck. Yeah. They died a while ago, but oh. I'm just thinking about in the. Whoa. They're still there though. Um, <laughs> Just dead sticks. All the things that I didn't do in that process. Oh, you were just talking okay. about citrus. So oh, I might even yeah. have another go at that. I think you should have another crack at it. Take yeah. on. Yeah. Take pay it. particular attention to the graft. Yeah. Yeah. And um, there was poo and compost added to the soil. To the potting mix. To the potting, potting mix. mix. Yeah. And, and you need drainage. Drainage. Holes. If there's not enough holes, holes drill more. Yeah. See, I was paying yeah. attention. Oh, good girl. I'm trying. I'm trying. All right. Let's head to Karen from Kingsley on 1300 222 720. Good morning, Karen. Hi, how are you going? Yeah, good. Good. Um, I sent in a video and a couple of photos of my lawn and my dog. Um, yeah, that's looking very sad. Oh, uh, your dog or the lawn? No. <laughs> oh, no, the, the dog looks quite happy. Uh, <laughs> the yeah, lawn. yeah, yeah, she's quite happy. She's the, old, lawn, yeah. the lawn looks quite dead. Uh, yeah, in all honesty. Yeah, the front fine. <laughs> front lawn looks fine. So what, a, <laughs> what do I do? Um, okay. <laughs> so, right. Uh, I think Karen might be one of my spirit animals. <laughs> <laughs> I think you might be right. <laughs> um, yes, the, uh, yeah, it's not looking good, I hate to tell you, Karen. No. So, anyway, all right. What you need to do is, number one, go and get yourself a wetting agent. Mm-hmm. Put that on. We can't open the video, by the way, but Mm. I can see the dog lying on the dead lawn, so that's fine. So going there, I think there may, is there, it looks like there could be a little bit of life left in it. Um, Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, so go and get yourself a wetting agent. Then mm-hmm. get yourself a um, some micro, some soil microbes, and yep. some mineral-based fertilizer, which will be mm-hmm. near the bucket of microbes. If you go to a nursery, you won't find it in hardware stores. Wetting okay. agent is vital. Um, so get a good quality wetting agent and um, put that on first. Then you've got to hose it in. Then add the microbes. Uh Then add the um, granular fertiliser. And Mm -hmm. then I want you to go over the entire area with a seaweed solution. Okay, seaweed. Yeah, so you're going to – you you, you can get one that's on a hose click-on. That's got a low pH. Don't go for uh, a seaweed solution that's high pH. When you go to a nursery, tell them you want a seaweed solution that's a hose click on with low pH. Okay, cool. And that, my friend, will bring your dog will be so happy. Roxy. Roxy. Say hi to Roxy for us. Roxy will be thrilled. (laughs) Hi, puppy. (laughs) Good on you, Karen. (laughs) Thanks very much for your call and... Good luck with that one. I'm yeah. sure Roxy's going to enjoy laying Roxy on the new recovered yeah. beautiful green lawn. Rather than have prickly dead leaf shafts going up his nether regions. <laughs> 29 to 10 here on Roots and Shoots. Gardening with Rowanna and Sabrina on ABC Radio Perth and WA. So it's time for a little bit of a musical interlude yeah. as we like to play and call it each week. Well, let's do that. It is that time again. It is. Sabrina's musical pick of the week. Pick, pick of the week. I know you're going to dig this. Here we go now. What you got for us, Sab? Well, um, look, I had a little flashback from Johnny Profumo the other day and he sent me a text message saying he was going to see Paul Dempsey. Um, and that triggered off a little memory going, Paul Dempsey used to play in Something for Kate, that band. Mm-hmm. So I thought, well, I haven't heard uh, Something for Kate for a long time. So I had a little bit of deja vu. <laughs> so I went, let's do deja vu. <laughs> Do we talk now? <laughs> <laughs> that was, hang on, still going. Yes, no? yeah. Oh, no, it's finished gone. now. Yeah. Oh. Just preempting the rainfall tomorrow, I think. That, that could be it. <laughs> tomorrow afternoon for Perth, the Bureau told us this morning, heavy rains. Yeah. Could be up to 20 mils. Good for the garden or oh, too much wind? No, oh, yeah. I hate the wind. I don't know why I chose Perth to live. But anyway, um, it will be a tad windy, but that's okay. Yeah. That's all right. We'll get over it, get through it and get on with it. That's what we do. Mm. Sab, we've got a special guest joining us now, a garden guru, geologist and groundwater specialist, Vish. Is his name? You know Vish? I do know Vish and I've been lucky enough to visit Vish's garden and was astonished at what he had there. Well, good morning, Vish. Good morning, Sabrina. How are you? Very well. More to the point, how are you? You've got a workshop on this morning. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I'm so excited. I'm glad to be here. You know, I've got already about 60 odd people here. Yeah, oh, it's great. Very exciting. Fantastic. <laughs> well, um, yes. we won't keep you long so that they, they can get to talk to you, Vish. So well, um, okay. yeah. people may not know, but uh, you're, you're a, a guru at growing a lot of the tropical fruit trees that gardeners here don't even think that they can grow. So, um, so what are some of the, you know, do tropical plants grow well here? And what are some of the things that people could have a crack at growing? 
Oh, well, uh, Sabrina, as you know, it's, it's a bit of a challenge uh, growing tropical plants, uh, particularly some 30, 40 years ago. But uh, I was so lucky that uh, I could get a lot of plants uh, those days from uh, Queensland. Yep. And, uh, and uh, to me now, there are uh, many, many exotics that I grow, which uh, I may think are hard to grow, but it is not at all, you know. Um, just to give an example, that I uh, have jackfruit tree growing for over 25 years, and uh, chiku, which uh, some people call it sapota or sapodilla. Ah, yes, uh, sapodilla, uh, yeah. Yes, they're, they're more South American, Brazilian and South American ones. Yep. And uh, custard apple. Yeah. And... Um, uh, there, there are another one, unique one, uh, which uh, most uh, Indians uh, love to have, but they can't. Mm-hmm. Or they think they can't. It's called Amla, Indian gooseberry. Oh, I've uh, never heard of it. Yes, it's an exotic one, which is, uh, which is uh, used a lot for uh, medicinal purposes uh, in India. Oh, okay. Yes. And, uh, ah. it, yes, yes, and, it and... is a sort of... Vish, yeah. do you with I know with some of the tropical plants you have to have a a pollinator. Is that the case for custard apple or? Yes, custard apple is a funny thing because the custard apple flower has got both the male and the female, but in the early stages uh, they open up at the different uh, stages, right. a bit like avocados. Yes, yeah. Um, and so, so unless uh, until they are well matured. We need to hand pollinate uh, most of these custard apples. Right. And and now they have got some new varieties so that uh, within uh, five years they get matured and uh, they become uh, self-pollinated. Right, you know? right. Yes. Oh, fantastic. Mm. And what about, so presumably, you know, people that live sort of on the coastal strip and have that gutless sand, what what would people need to do to be able to grow some of these more tropical fruits? Well, most of the time I think it is basically in the coastal so that, uh, you know, we have a lot of this uh, sand and um, particularly what I recommend is uh, key things is uh, that getting a good tropical plant that is quality plant Mm -hmm. And uh, getting the soils uh, changed um, uh, with uh, plenty of organic soil, you know. Yeah. And 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 on the coastal region, because heavy wind, and uh, we need to protect them. And uh, I normally use even in my garden during summer and winter, I use this uh, frost cloth, which uh, which protects both heat, wind, and also frost during winter. Ah, oh, okay. So it's called frost cloth. Yes, it's okay. a frost cloth. Ah. Yes, it is. So it's not the green uh, shade cloth, but it's a frost cloth, ah. which uh, we, we, which actually helps and it does three things, you know. Yeah, so, that's great. Yeah. Well, because yeah. we've, we've got a bit of wind heading our way. This, this, this. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, <that's>, so <laughs> I know, it's tricky. So what about availability of plants? Because the big thing is, Vish, people are really hungry for information on how to yep. grow, you know, lots of the, like I, I, I put a lychee in a little while ago and I'm terribly excited about that because I love lychee. Yeah. Um, so the, a big thing is information for people to know which varieties do better here and where they can get plants. And so what's the best forum for, for people to find out about that? Well, well, Sabrina, this is one of the reasons uh, this this uh, Indian uh, vegetables and uh, fruit group we started uh, what a couple of years ago, right? Just uh, for a lot of new migrants coming from Africa, India, Southeast Asia, they just come from with the tropical background. Yeah, and they didn't know anything about tropical plants, and at the same time, here we don't have the luxury of uh, nutritious sand. Soil. Yeah. So, so we, we, we really can't go. That's how we started this group two years ago. Right. And and this group has gone. Uh, now we have got about uh, more than uh, ten to eleven thousand members beginning of this year. Wow. Yes. And, and how could people join join that group or or get more information on um, 
you know, on the information available is what's what's the group called? It's it's it's, it's called the Indian Vegetable and Fruit Group. Yes. I jokingly say IVF. <laughs> <not> IVF. <laughs> <laughs> and they could find out where the where the trees and the. Oh God, I, I remember going to a market in Mumbai early yeah. early in the morning, and Vish, I reckon <clears throat> at least sixty percent of the vegetables I'd never seen before and had no idea what to do with them. So so. Yeah. There's a whole world of food out there that we need to explore. Um, yes. So, so I think there'll be a lot of people listening to this that would seriously love to be involved. And um, and of course, a lot of the food grown in other places, row there's a lot of medicinal uses for them as well. So, Vish, we appreciate your time. Enjoy the workshop this morning. Yes, thank you so much for that. And then um, we'll probably chat again sometime during the period. We okay, will indeed, you. Vish. We'll bring you back on in spring because there will be a whole pile of fruit that will be coming on at that time of the year. We will indeed. It's coming up to quarter to ten here on Roots and Shoots. Got a gardening question? Ask Sabrina. 1300 222 720. We've got a few phone lines open, so you can get on the phones. We've also got plenty of text messages coming through on 0437 922 Sab, having a look at this one, Julia mm. wants to know, what is this now monster bush taking over my front garden? What should I do about it? Okay, she has a lily pilly. Um, Lord's mercy. <laughs> and that is one of the older lily pillies that will get to oh, probably about 20 metres tall and about uh, 15 wide. Um, I would suggest that that either is pruned every year to maintain its <laughs> its height and width um, the root system's pretty horrendous. Um, the other alternative is to cut it down. Okay, there we go. Mm. A few options there. Yeah. Um, Kim from Hilton would like to know, Hi, Sabrina, my older pawpaws especially have started losing their leaves and looking poorly. Is this water stress and what should I do to feed them? Water and nutrient stress. You definitely need to water them and you definitely need to feed them up because they should not be dropping their leaves at the moment. The other thing it can be, of course, is a disease where they're rotting. Uh, but you'll feel, you'll feel the trunk and it'll be all sort of squishy and that's never a good sign in a plant, squishy, <laughs> squishy trunk. Um, I'd say it's lack of water and nutrients. A couple of quick ones uh, from Shauna. Could you please ask Sab if she prefers wedding agent in crystal form or liquid form? Thank you. Uh, look, I prefer liquid because it's easier to water in. Liz in Hammersley is rapidly learning that flattery gets you everywhere and bumps <laughs> your texts up the program. Good morning, ladies. Love the music choice today, Sabrina. <laughs> Quick question. When can I prune my eremophila? Eremophila. 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 Um, so autumn it's about is about two metres t- high, sorry, I should say. Yeah, that's cool. So you could take, you can take 40% off your eremophila and I would be doing it now. Okay. Uh, one final one on the text before we jump back on the phones. Bruce in Bremer Bay. Hi, guys. I brought some Royal Hake seeds, planted them, and they never come up. It's been three months. Just wondering what the correct procedure is for getting the seeds up. Well, good luck is all <laughs> I can say. Royal Hakea, Bremer Bay, maybe. Um Hakea seed, well, number one, you need to make sure that you actually planted the seed and not the packing around the seed. Number two, you may, had to make sure that the hakea actually had an ovary in it. Um, number three, you needed to either heat treat it where you put it in the, in the oven or you scarify it on a nail file and then soak it in water and then um, just go and buy one. Buy a plant. Buy a royal hakea. The problem is they don't get the colour that they get in the Fitz, in the Fitzgerald River National Park because of the the minerals that are there in, in the soil type. So you might have to go and collect a bit of rock from somewhere, get a, grind it up with a bomby knocker in a 
What did they used to? What's that thing called? A dolly pot. You know, in the gold I'm telling rush. the story. The- I'm not helping much, am I? I'm just <laughs> watching your motion and going blank. So, so in the in the gold gold fields, they used to have a thing called a dolly pot, which was a, a long steel tube, and then they had a uh, like a a, a pestle mm-hmm. that they bashed the the quartz with to see if there was gold inside. My family, my Edwards family, probably all sitting at home shaking their head that I had no idea what you were talking about and couldn't help you and they're probably disappointed in me right now. Seriously. Um, It's sort of like a long, long mortar and pestle. (laughs) Anyway, you need some of the minerals that are in the soils that are in the Fitzgerald River National Park to get the colours in your Royal Hakea. Okay. We got there. Yes. Um, Before we head back to the phones, just some important information for our listeners in the Midwest. Please listen in. Um, you People in the Midwest area are very busy preparing for Cyclone Saroja to cross the coast around midnight tomorrow night. The area from Coral Bay to Geraldton is currently on blue alert with residents expecting winds up to 150 kilometres an hour. Earlier today, listeners in the Midwest and Wheat Belt received some information about evacuation centres in the Shire of Northampton. Centres were planned for Calbarry and Northampton. However, those centres have now been cancelled due to the path of the cyclone and people need to head to the town of Dongra and to the Irwin Recreation Centre. DFES have an official evacuation centre for those people who don't have an alternative accommodation who will be welcomed at the Irwin Recreation Centre in Dongra from five o'clock today. So please just repeating that and confirming that there's no evacuation centres that are going to be set up and available in Northampton or Calbarry. Instead, you need to head to Dongra if you're needing somewhere to evacuate. So that's really important information. And the Irwin Recreation Centre um, will be opening from 5pm today. So please um, stay listening to ABC and go to emergency.gov.au and the likes to continue getting the information that you need for those residents in the Midwest. All right, 1300 222 720 is the phone number. That's what Peter has called and we'll head to him now. Peter in San Remo, good morning. Yes, good morning, ladies. How are you? Yeah, good, Peter. Good. Look, I've got a question listening to V's. Yes. Uh, on mang- mangosteens. Oh, mangosteens. A- yep. Yes, they're the queen of the fruits, yes. according to some people. Yeah. And would love to be able to grow some mangosteens in San Remo. How possible? Probably. Now, just tell me where San Remo is. San Remo is about seven kilometres north of Mandra on okay. the coast. Probably not a hope in hell, Peter, but... Um, but what I like oh. to say is give everything a crack. Number one, it's going to be the coastal winds that will be the main problem there. Then you've got the gutless sandy soil, which is highly alkaline. Um, but, look, I think it would be a struggle for mangosteens to fruit there. But I would get, um, yeah, I, w- I, w- I would go on to that uh, face group. Facebook group and find out, um, you know, get as much information as possible. But I doubt that you're going to get much fruit off a mango steen in San Remo. All right. Good luck with that one, Peter. Let's head to Jake from Mount Helena now. Good morning, Jake. Uh, it's Mount Helena, girls. Good morning. How yep. are you? Yep, very well. I think that's what Rose said, Mount Helena. Uh, the, I didn't hear the mount. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> uh, what right, can we do we, for uh, you, Jake? We tried uh, for the first time to grow some cabbage in one of our very productive wicking beds. Yeah. And so my wife planted a dozen seedlings earlier this week. Yes. And uh, we are familiar with the damage that uh, slaters tend to do. Yes. But this time, the next morning out of the dozen, there were three left and the other nine were showing... Uh, like a pencil had been pushed into the ground and left nice nine nine cylindrical holes in the soil. Right. What could what could have been okay. that? Okay. So that is that'll be the larvae from beetles. 
um, which are the larvae emerging up out of the ground and chomping your seedlings. Or it can be a thing called a cutworm, which also is in the soil, which is a caterpillar. Um, unfortunately, it's too late for you to do anything. You could perhaps drench the area with neem oil, but that would be uh, sort of the best that you could do. And then turn the soil over to see if you can find the little black-headed larvae. All right, good luck with that one, Jake. Let's head to James now. We're about seven minutes away from the program ending for the day. James from Morring Up. Good morning. Yes, hi. Hi, it's James. Hi, we had a call from Mount Helene. It's not, not too far from here. Oh, there you um, go. <laughs> look, I've got um, about 150 uh, Corymbia seedlings yeah. that I've grown um, from seed, um, uh, the Maculata, the uh, Calafilla and the um, uh, Citriodora yeah. um, that I want to plant around my property. Now, they're around, uh, I'd say, 10 centimetres high at the moment. Maybe yeah, yep. Um, and I'm going to do it next weekend with some friends. I'm just yeah. wondering what the best way to prepare the soil and, and, and plant them to make sure that they, they survive. survive. Um, so I would put uh, – so all those Corimbias are actually happy in whatever the soil is. I'd go and get granular wetting agent and put that in the bottom of the hole and either tree native tree tablets or native slow-release fertiliser uh, in the bottom of the planting hole and then a little bit in the top and that's it. Just make sure that the hole, that the wetting agent's in. You water the hole before you put the seedlings in. You can put the seedlings in a bucket with some seaweed solution before you plant them out. But they don't need much, James. So wetting agent, slow-release fertiliser uh, and make sure that the hole is wet and then pre-soak the seedlings before they go in the ground. Thanks for your call, James. Let's head now to Anne in Bassendean. Good morning, Anne. Uh, morning, Bill. Morning, uh, Anne. Just a, quick, uh, just a quick question. I'm about to wage war. I've got caterpillars and mites and the tomatoes aren't looking too good. So I'm wondering whether I can spray the caterpillars and then use an organic fungicide on top. Can I uh, do it all at the same time or should I wait? No. Well, you can. What you can do is you can um, spray. You can spray for the caterpillars with a caterpillar specific spray, and then wait. And the next day, then you can use uh, a, a fungicide. I I wouldn't mix the two of them, two of those together. So just as long as you wait a day, well, tomorrow it's going to rain, so you can't, and that's why you want to do both today. Okay, so I just thought about that. Um, so do the caterpillar specific spray now, and then later on this afternoon, do the fungicide spray. All right, from Bassendine, let's head to Wembley Downs. Wembley Downs, that's what I'm trying to say. Hi, Grant. Hi, how are you? Yeah, good, Grant. Um, we've got a mandarin tree that's completely overloaded this year and it's dropping about 20 fruit a day. I'm just yeah. wondering if that's, we, we did a bit of Google, thought that's normal. It is normal. And, and with mandarins, Grant, they, they fruit, they're biennial fruit. So every second year you get an absolute bumper crop. Yeah, we got nothing last year. Yeah, that's right. So that's quite normal for mandarins. That's what they do. And they can't possibly hold on to all that fruit, so they will dump a third of the fruit. Okay, fantastic. So mm. it's just normal. That's just normal, Grant. Nothing that you have done wrong. Good on you, Grant. Thank you very much for your call. Uh, we might have been... got through all our calls this morning. Oh, have my goodness. There we... might be time for a sneaky... One or two more. We might be able to squeeze in if um, we get those ones up fast enough. Um, a couple of quick text messages. Uh, Sabrina, best time to move asparagus crowns, please. Oh, I'd be doing it now or any, any time between now and the end of August. Okay, very good. Um, how can I grow eucalyptus webs? 
Ster- Steriana. Steriana from Seeds. Is um, it a beautiful? It is a beautiful tree. I love it. You have to make sure you get the mature seed. The mature seed is further down the tree, and it's woody and brown. Don't get fresh seed because the ovaries won't be mature in the seed. Then put them in a paper bag, whack it on the dashboard of your car, leave it there for two weeks. The capsules open and the seed falls out. Then you can sow the seed and you can do that over winter. All right. Um, Colin in Kingsley wants to know, why are the oranges dropping off my tree and what can I do about it? No fruit is dropping off the tangelo. No, the same. I've had fruit drop for the last three or four weeks. Uh, changes in temperature, elongation of summer, uh, wind, you're going to lose some this weekend as well. Um, most citrus will drop drop at least a third of its fruit. So don't panic. Um, it's what happens. All right, let's squeeze in one last call very quickly on our way to the news. Lindsay from Albany, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, ladies. Thanks for your show. Um, I've got a question. I've got a couple of tulip trees in my front yard. Yeah. And um, one of them, and he is a beauty. He stands about a good 50 foot tall. Mm. Um, he's being attacked at the bottom um, of the trunk by white ant. Okay. Yep. Now, termites are a, a very specialised thing. So you, if it's a tree that you love, Lindsay, you must get a, a control, a termite control person out. There's different methods now. So termite control has come a long way in the last decade. So you need to, there's at least two different systems, but I would definitely get a termite expert to come out and look at the tree because it is worth spending the money on it to save that beautiful tree. One final one from Barb in Geraldton. Any tips on growing finger limes from seed? Uh, Oh, from seed. Um, You may have to wait eight years to get fruit. I'm just going to come up with (laughs) that straight away. Uh, Do grow them only in potting mix in a pot there. Be patient and uh, good potting mix, regular water, good drainage. All right, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. There's another week of Roots and Shoots behind us. Thank you very much for your company. We look forward to joining you at the same time next week. Please, if you're on the roads or out in the weather, those of you in the Midwest and Gascoigne regions in particular, stay safe over the next couple of days and stay listening to the radio because Sports Talk is joining you on the other side of the news. Discover more great ABC podcasts, live radio and exclusives on the ABC Listen app.